beast, isn't they? Chuff the bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I'm just concentrating on not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boat. Called him, man. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same, same all the time. We want something different. A good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. We're out on the beach, beavering away. And that's not quite true because I haven't started yet. Bivvy's up because there's an easterly wind. Fishing conditions. We'll have a pan round and look in a minute. I can see the needles. We're in between Milford and Hordle. And what are we up to? Well, the target today is small eye. I had a go at this last night and I caught a tiny little tea bag one. Move the rod. Tiny little tea bag one. I'll stick a picture up now. And uh, yeah, so what we're going to do today is a little bit different than just the normal. This is me fishing, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to take it right through the numbers, right from the start. So when the weather and conditions are more favourable, we're going to go for a full setup procedure of the bivvy, uh, the beach shower, at some point in the near future. Um, but for today, this is all about targeting a small eyed ray. How I target a small eyed ray. So first up, I've got the Any Fish Anywhere Match Pro Mark II. Um, and these are 13 foot seven, which is 4.14 meters, and they're rated 150 to 170 grams. Um, not, I'm not sponsored. I paid full money for these, no reductions or anything like that. This is my own money. Um, I love them. I think they're amazing rods. I really do enjoy using these rods. And this is where we get into the nitty gritty of it. This is gonna fish reel down. Reel down with multipliers. So I have fixed my adjustable reel seat in position just with tape. So I could remove it and change it. And I've gone about a hand distance up from the butt. This is cricket bat handle material cut into a strip and taped in. And that acts as my um, reel grip for casting. And I can't remember which brand that is, possibly Tronics um, Coaster. To double up, because the locking mechanism on these, even though it's a Fuji adjustable reel seat, this will also give you a finger grip when you're casting. And roughly center of chest, arm stretched out, I've put a piece of tape, just a marker, that's where my lead goes for my casting. So I get consistently the same each time I do it. Move that, put that across my lap so I don't clatter it around. The reels, I'm using the Pen Fathom 2. And these are the 12s, um, 12 SD, star drag. So they've got a star drag adjustment. Um, and I'm using the ASSO Ultracast 14 pound line and the ASSO Ultra Flex 80 pound shock leader. Um, we're not going to get into knots and shock leader knots. We're not going to go quite that deep. We will look at that in the future. Um, and I'm really getting on well with these reels. Um, my personal settings for the side to side adjustment I just like to feel the slightest amount of side to side play, nip it up one, click. The instructions, read the instructions, the reels come with a setup procedure. Um, and for the mag setting, the first couple of casts I'm going to go eight clicks out. Once I'm comfortable and I'm a couple of baits in, I'll probably go as much as ten. Um, and there's sixteen in total. So just to set them up now, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Counting to ten, because <laughs> I'm used to it, because that's what I'm used to casting with, I've gone back to. So my initial couple of casts, I used these last night. So the line's been off these reels and only been on there last night. There won't be that much memory in the line, in the mono. If I hadn't used them for a while, I would just cast a blank lead out 
and get it out a few times, reel it in, cast it out, reel it in, and give it progressively more until I'm comfortable, and then rig up and bait up. Because nothing worse than sending it out on the first cast, having something wrong, just not comfortable with it, and cracking off and losing a whole set. There's gear out there for no reason, um, and you've got to set up all over again. So, for connecting up, I can do this, the other piece of the rod's over there, we're, we're gonna move on to that in a minute. Just gonna lock it into place. Obviously by having my adjustable reel seat taped on, I don't even have to worry about alignment. I've already pre-done that at home. I've taken, so if this was dark at night, um, windy winter, um, not very nice, you know, harassed, waiting to get going, it would be all good. It's already aligned. So I've had to do nothing there other than clamp it up, clamp it up, make sure everything's snug, but not ridiculous. And for a cast, you use the strap, you've got your thumb over the coaster, my hand goes to my tape mark, and that's me good to go. So I'm gonna connect the other piece of the rod up, and then we're gonna look at some rigs, or a rig, and the baiting up. And then in short time in, we're gonna get one out, because I'm keen to get one out. There's nothing out there at the moment. I'm too busy jibber jabbering. <laughs> right, let's get this on the tripod and let's look at a rig. So I've now put the rod together. You know, it, you, one of the things you've got to be careful of is everything is in alignment. All of the eyes are lined up. Um, and, and this is why it's always nice in daylight, although it's not always the case to make sure you don't miss any of the ice when you're, uh, when you're setting everything up. So I like using the Termalink as my end connection because it goes nicely through all of the eyes. And then when you come to pack it away, it doesn't clatter the eye rings either because it's plastic coated. It's a bit kinder coming back through when it's time to pack away. So excuse my back, just get to the end. Gemini tip tape, my favourite. Out of all the different options there are, other people have their favourites. Gemini's mine. Um, and once we've set up, he says as he pings it out of his hand, once we've set up, oh, here we go, Mark. That's how not to do it. There we go. Happens to the best of us. Um, that's the rod ready to accept a rig once we've baited up. So that will just sit in that groove in that piece there quite nicely, the wind won't catch it. So we're gonna look at the rig now and the baiting up. This is my favorite bit. This is my favorite bit. We'll put that reel to one side, make sure it doesn't get clattered around. Um, rig time. So even though I used these last night, I did use these last night, I rinsed them out, washed them out, dried them out, put them back in bags. So I have got my selection of rigs for today. I've got one, two, three up and overs. So I'll run two on the rods, one baited and ready to go, clipped up on the tripod. For variation, I've got a larger bait, possibly for bass later, um, pulley rig. You can put a chunk of uh, squid on that. And I've got two multi-hook rigs. And that's enough for me. I'm gonna be using the SKM pattern gripper leads today, and they're in six ounce. And just to finish that little piece off, I've got three packets of sand eel, because we're fishing for small eye, and one pound of squid. So that's all of that sort of taken care of. We'll put all that to one side, my scissors and my cloth. I like to, you know, I like to have a cloth to keep my hands clean. Let's get one of these up and overs. So we take one of these up and overs. I don't wrap them up too much, as in twist them together too much. And even as I tried to do it then, the wind caught it and it's made a fall of me, in it? Because it's now tangled. Um, just while I'm sorting this little tangle out, 
you get good at sorting tangles out. Um, this is a sort of like a standard up and over. It's got a three foot body, five foot hook snood. So we're talking, excuse me, three foot body, running ledger with an imp, a Gemini uh, bent rig clip at the top with a swivel so it goes onto the Termalink. 60 to 65 mil rig tubing halfway over the swivel. There is a making on the um, channel for this. It's one of it's a very popular video actually. People like that one. I think it's helped out a few with their rig making. Um, and about a four and a half, five foot hook snood. And this is the business end. A 30 Varavas BMX and a 30 big mouth panel Varavas because it sits on the line nice. See the kink in the hook just helps. And I find 30 seems to work well for small eyes. For things like undulates, I tend to go to a 40, but for the small eye, I could even go down to a 20, I think, but I don't want a deep hooked fish. I think 30 is a nice compromise. You just have to excuse me a minute. It is windy, it is cold. So beating up. Let's get to the good bit. A packet of sand eels. When I'm running out of my Coleman box, bait box, you want to try and keep your sand eels as frozen and as cold as long as possible. And I use it almost like a bin. I just chuck everything in it. So these are still frozen. But sand eels do defrost quite quickly, quite easily. So I'm going to go two sand eel. I'm not going for complications for this. I just want to get this one out. So I've got two sand eel. I'm going to put them side by side. Straighten them out slightly because they've been frozen. They're a bit like a banana. Get fine elastic. Just start wrapping them together, loosely to start with, just to get them in, to get them locked together. And I don't go all the way to the tail, and I don't go all the way to the nose. But I do give them, with this fine elastic, quite a bit of a whip into. Can you hit that? Nice bit of movement in the sea. We need some tide today and we need some favourable conditions. It's going to rain later and we're going to be fishing into dark. So definite for the clothing, a definite for the beach shelter and filming will be difficult later but we're going to stick it out. So two sand eel strapped together the head's off at the gills, the tail's off to make a nice streamlined bait. The top hook of the two, make sure it doesn't go past the body and sits nicely, almost in the trench between the two. You're sort of looking at that. See the hook there? Nice. And then we get the elastic again. And we have got to whip that in to stop that from turning because it will naturally want to turn. So we concentrate on the eye of the hook. And then when we get down the end where the hook is, I take wraps around the hook and alternate where it actually sits to try and lock that hook point in. And by leaving the pit bit out past it, you're actually trying to stop the hook from snagging onto anything else. Give you some confidence in that. So that's all locked in. We then take the panel hook. Take three turns. And about an inch up from the base of the bait. And then we're going to lock that in as well. So I'm using my thumb as guide. I'm actually running the cotton, or the elastic, over and past my thumb. 
keeping the hook point clear. Right. What we end up with is that. So if you can see those hook points, there's one, there's the other, facing in alternate ways, all on the nine, nice. We're going to use one of those SKM LEDs, clip that up, six ounce grip lead onto the imp. This is all the good stuff, isn't it? And you know what's coming next, because every one that demonstrates, this is how you clip the rig up, it always fights you. It always wants to um, have a bit of a spin and a play. But I've got lucky. <laughs> I've got lucky. Make the most of it. And that's how it clips up. So it's only about three foot long. I'm going to go and put it on the tripod, clip it onto the rod, cast it out, and we'll be fishing. And with a bit of luck, one of us, I'm hoping one of us, one of the three of us, I've got Graham to my right, Mike to my left, <laughs> one of us is going to catch a ray today because that's the target. That's what we're all here for. So there we go. One three foot, up and over, six ounce SKM weight, double sand eel wrap, 3.0 BMX, BMP. Let's get it out there. <laughs> if I was more organised, it's all a rush at the moment for the first bait out. But you've got your trace bar and you've also got your little hook on your tripod there so with all of that said and done we've already set our rod up we're good to go we can connect he says our termalink onto our three foot rig termalink swivel gemini bent rig clip three foot up and over Quick sanity check, just to make sure that everything's all right. Drag done up tight. A check to see where we're at, height-wise. My tape mark is there, so we come down a little bit. So we're right on the tape mark. Everything's good to go. Next thing is to get this puppy out of there. So I'm not going for crazy mad distance. I just want this one out there and fishing whilst I slow time set my second rod up. So I've got my strap on my reel, I've got my finger around my coaster. I check to make sure that everything is free. I've already done all my clicks and all my checks. And it's just, we've got a bank behind us, so it will be difficult to do any kind of pendulum, but I'm just gonna do a steady left, right, drop, fall, and out. She's flying. Nice. Dead smacker than the groin. See how that holds in that tide. Because there is a bit of tide at the moment. Reel down into it to make sure it doesn't just rumble off down the beach. Sitting nice. Adjust my drag. Set my clicker. put it in the tripod rod tip bent nicely into the tide into the uh, into the weight it's holding nicely we're fishing <laughs> all right come back grab my camera We're baited, weighted, casted, or cast, and we're fishing. Let's see how long it's going to be. Um, I need to check timing. Check my phone in a minute, see what the time is. All a bit cock a hoop, aren't we? There we go, that's a bit better. Um, so we're fishing. Sat nicely into that six ounce grip weight. Um, Mike's got one of his out and fishing, rigging his second. I'm filming, so it's taking time. Graham from Shorecast is walking up behind me now. What have we got there, mate? Oh, mate? What have we got there? Ragworm. Oh, ragworm. <laughs> yeah, I managed to get ten. <laughs> nice. <Free>. Um, <laughs> um, so that's us. And we're fishing. Exciting times. Flat calm. We'll give you a look round. 
Um, and we get the second rod kitted and out. So we're fishing both. We're going to fish into darkness. Um, the weather's going to get a little bit leery later. I'm just hoping it eases off. Yeah, it's kind to us tonight. Right, let's have a look. There's Mike and Graham. Quick pan around. In the distance there, at the end of that point, is the needles. You can see the weather's very moody at the moment. It's a beautiful afternoon though. If you're geared up for it, got the right clothing, got your bivvy, got all your bits and pieces. There's both of our shouters over there. There is the faintest chance that the swell might breach the top, the level that I'm on tonight. So I'm gonna have to keep, keep my wits about me. It was close last night, but that's where we're at. Bass trawl just past the groins and out on the flats there, that's where the rays live. And that's what we're hoping for. With both of the rods fishing now and the rain sort of coming in a little bit, light shower, um, I thought I'd make, uh, make hay. I've got the lunch or my tea for this evening. I've managed to sneak a chocky bicky. <laughs> That's for later, some soup. And I've got, what have we got here? Nescafe cappuccino. I've got the, what's this one? It's the OX Hero. I can't remember what it's called. Oh yeah, there we go. Better to show you, I think. OX Hero. It's a cracking little stove, it's tiny. My other one's a little bit lumpy, a little bit big. Um, so it is, yeah. Make myself a brew, have a sandwich. Save the um, soup for later when it gets a bit colder. Um, about half a bottle of water. Tide is proper coming in now. Got to make sure I don't get caught out with that. What I like about this stove is it's all compact, it's all good to go, but also it's got its own igniter and everything. So where are we going to get this? No bites yet, not even any doggies or anything. We, there was about a doggy a chuck last night once the once the light went out. Once it got dark. Keep all my rubbish together. Stick it in my pocket for now. Let's get this bad boy lit. Be careful obviously, it's gas. There we go. Thunderbirds are go. What you do need is to put the lid on so that it heats up quicker. And I've just put it on top of my um on top of my little bait bait cooler there look my Coleman. I'm just, I've got a coffee on the way here. I stopped off at the garage. Um because I forgot my cup with the lid. And what I haven't got is a stirring stick. So I'm gonna have to use something else. I'm gonna have to use my disgorger. <laughs> That's my um, stirring stick. So it doesn't take long. It takes about 60 seconds. And I don't want it thermonuclear. I don't want it so hot that I can't, can't drink it. But other than that, yeah, it's all good. How you been? Hope you're well. I have been fishing recently. Haven't done a lot of filming. Hard to film at night and in rain. Makes life difficult. Steam's starting to come out of that already, look. Good bit of kit. Proper heats up really fast. And another trick is only just to put the amount of water in there that you actually need. Don't go filling it right up, taking ages to heat up water that you're not going to use. Um, and I'll be able to heat my soup up in it later. That's boiling already, look. That's how quick that is. Switch that off. And just exactly a cup. I'll leave the lid off it so it doesn't get too sweaty. <sighs> 
dual, dual use disgorger is my stirring stick now. <laughs> because that is so hot, and it will be proper screaming hot, I'll just top it up with a little bit of cold water. Just take the edge off it. And there we have it. Mm. All good. So we've got a sandwich, we've got a hot brew. It's probably going to be too hot to drink, to be honest. Ooh, cheese hot. Cheese proper hot. Um, it's a sandwich and a chocky bicky. Didn't have time to make my own sandwiches before I come out. But yeah, so we've got the tide, we've got the movement. We're waiting for light to fail. We've got the baits, got the rigs. We're all geared up for a small life. I do hope we can winkle one out tonight. It'd be nice to get one on camera. The bycatch, if we start struggling, I will swap, even though it's catch and release this time of year. It's not bad for bass along here as well, but then you fish closer in, bigger baits. And I might swap to a pulley for that. So we'll pay, play it out, see how it goes. But 100% targeting for a small eye. I'm gonna have a sandwich, and I'll see you in a bit. So as the rain comes down, I've just sat inside. It's just worth mentioning that I've baited and waited a third rig. And I'm just going to put that up on the tripod now. There's no dog walkers here, but you have to be careful with this because they sneak up on you quite quick when you're on a public beach. Um, and you don't want hooks in a... You don't want a dog taking a bait and ending up with hooks in it. But that is clipped up, ready. First baits are still soaking. We're losing the light, the rains come as predicted, and we're sort of settled down for the evening. I've had my tea, I've had a chalky bicky, been naughty, <laughs> I've had a brew. I'm just waiting for the first bite, really. Um, I'd love for one to go now, because that would be on cue. That's not happening. Um, yeah, lights dropping, expect the doggies to turn on sometime soon, and then it'll be a case of fighting through the doggies, see if we can get a small eye, possibly swap one rig later on to a bass rig um, depending on how it all pans out Mike and Graham both fishing none of us have had a bite baits have soaked for the first 20 minutes or so I was hoping one of us would bring something in during daylight just before we have to go on to the old fake lighting but looks like it's going to be a lights out game tonight Right, I'm all ready. Can't do any more. Spare rig, both soaking, both doing their thing. Just got to wait for the fish to turn up. Well, the conditions have deteriorated significantly. And uh, on that up and over rig, got fully slack lined. I looked up and I thought, my rod doesn't look right. Because it, it was straight. It was straight up in the air, not, not counted over um, and, and it was in the complete next groin so I've just had to go and retrieve this fish from from for, that's a single sand eel so that's what he actually took a single sand eel let's just move that rig out of the way and the rains come in um, and the little ones are always difficult to hold because they do not Waves coming up up, up the beach. <laughs> These little tea baggy ones. <laughs> Hard work to hold on to. Let's have a look at him. Look at him. It's bristling. Absolutely bristling. <laughs> little tea baggy, small eyed ray. <laughs> He's a tiny one. Look, see if I can just put him up like that. <laughs> just balance him on one hand. He's tiny, isn't he? Look at that nasal area around there. It's clear. And they're called small eye rays because they've got small eyes. <laughs> and all the little barbs on his tail. I'm saying him. It's a she. <laughs> Pretty little creature. Little protruding mouth. And aggressive hunters. Because that would t that would be hunting out live sand eel, so it must either go along the bottom, 
with that to seek them out or pounce on them if there's if there's a shoal I don't know I don't know what they do that's the underside a bit of weed and the mouthlet look at them absolutely bristling so I'm gonna have to get this one back there's the target species for tonight a small eye pretty pretty creatures lovely colors got to keep an eye on my rods Because in these conditions at the moment, it's getting difficult. It is difficult. Yeah. One very small, small eye. Graham still to have one. Mike had one earlier that was four pounds something. Can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a nice, much, much better stamp of fish. So between three of us, we've had two so far. And hopefully it's going to liven up a bit. Because I'm not exaggerating, it's been dire. I haven't even had a doggy tonight. This is the first fish. But, target species. Target achieved. Right, let's get him in. Get baited up. Sort that rig out. That's my standby rig. The other two are out there fishing. Um, yeah. The rain's set in now, so full, full foul weather gear. <laughs> and there's a few more people turned up as well. Right. I'm going to get this little critter back in carefully without uh, endangering myself. The water's quite coloured at the moment, but I actually see him because he flapped off on near the surface. Yeah, look at that. Proper chilly now that the rain's set in as well. Temperature's proper dropped down. But when you get your target species, it, it boils you up. You sort of get all excited now because what else can we get? We want another one. We want to prove that that one wasn't a fluke. So, better get back to it, innit? It'd be nice if Graham got one. Um, and if, if I managed to pull something else out, because it's just been dire fishing. Right place, right time, right rigs, right baits, right technique, right tide. Everything's right, just not catching. And it's raining. Keep an armor rods. Right, get back to it. We'll see you in a bit. But no South Coast fishing session would be complete without a doggy. <laughs> it's a tiny weenie doggy. And they writhe, don't they? They sort of, and it will shut their eyes and away they go. Pretty little things, really. We look closely at the markings. But yeah, little doggy. <laughs> Gonna get this one back. Um, tide's well and truly on the drop now, so it's been hard work. No, t no two ways around it. Graham's had more or less a doggy a chuck. That's the first one I've had of this evening. How you can be so different in such a short space, you know, of distance. Doggy a chuck, first one of the session. Um. So far, one small, small eye for me. A four pound something for Mike. Um, we're not exactly setting the world on fire, are we? But, we're fishing. And there's still hope. We're gonna fish for about another hour. So I've just fresh bait casted. Gonna get this critter back in. Gonna fish out the other bait, so that's two baits out. And then we'll be back. One way or another, Maybe a little bit of excitement. We might get to see a bite yet, I don't know. It's very slow. Even the bites are slow. Just pausing then, because um, Graham's got a bit of a bend in his rod. If it turns into something, I'll bring you back. But until then, Gonna get this critter back. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Well, time's marching on. I'm down to one rod. I'm just in the process of packing the other one up. Gonna carry on fishing this one out for the next 15 minutes or so. And then it will be shepherd and sheepdog time. Get the flock out of here. Um, yeah. One doggy, one small eye for all my efforts. 
been all right actually. I've enjoyed it. Winter fishing, March, shore, Solent, south coast. It's never going to set the world on fire, is it? But there's immense satisfaction in getting your target species. You come out with the rigs and the bait, a plan, you watch the tides, you watch the weather, you try and find a weather window that you can actually fish, a tide when you can actually access the beach. This beach isn't accessible at all tides. Bigger tides you can't get. Um, yeah. So we're building tide, an up and over rig, a single sand eel, boom, small eyed ray. What more could you ask for? About a dozen more, twice the size. <laughs> it is wishful thinking, isn't it? We're working on it. I'm going to try and bring you one of those sessions from the spring summer. One that really lights the lights the beach up. See if we can get you a multi-ray, a multi-ray session, significant sizes. That's what we're planning on. So there's loads more coming. I know I've been quiet as of late. New job, personal circumstances, rubbish weather, rubbish fishing. I have been fishing. And I've filmed three quarters of a film several times. <laughs> but it's just been rubbish. Um, so yeah, if anything else happens, I'll bring you back. We'll get you in on the action. But if not, from me, from here, for now, it's goodbye. Tight lines, happy fishing. From Mike, from Graham, from me. We'll see you again sometime soon. Bye for now.